dividing polynomials, long division. Now this video is a basic video, an introduction to long division of polynomials. Don't get very advanced here, just the basics of it, which can be challenging in themselves. Uh, so I just want to introduce it here, and then I have another video that you can watch after this one that's advanced, and you can see some of the other things that occur, and I'll mention that as we go through this video. So when you're performing long division of polynomials, it is critical to understand every step of long division of whole numbers, okay? And, I, and you're like, whole numbers? That's like second grade. I know, I know. So look, just, I know you've done this since second grade or sometime very early in your life. So most of you just do it without even, even thinking about it, okay? So that's exactly why we're going to start there and talk about every single pencil stroke of long division of whole numbers and why, all right? Because if you don't understand every single pencil stroke, everything you do and why you do it, then you won't be able to apply it to polynomials because it's the same thing. All right. So when performing long division of polynomials, everything needs to be in descending order. That's huge. It, it may not be given to you in descending order. In this video, it is because this is the basics. In the advanced video, not so much. OK. And then also all the powers of the variable must be accounted for from the largest power down to no variable at all. What I mean is if you start with x to the third, you've got to have an x squared column, an x column, or, or a place for x squared x, and then a, uh, one for the whole number. You can't skip from x cubed to x. You, I mean, if it does, you have to put something in there called a placeholder. All right, again, we won't deal with that in this video. So this video will introduce that all the problems will already be in descending order, and they will not be missing any powers. For more advanced long division, see my video, Dividing Polynomials Long Division Advanced. All right? So let's look at 856 divided by 3. Again, you've done this since, I don't know, second grade. Some of you learned it when you were four, maybe. Who knows? But you've been doing this for a long time. Okay? You could do this with your eyes closed, hanging up down, upside down from the ceiling or whatever. Okay? You could do this in your sleep. It doesn't matter if it's written this way or, and I put it in a thought cloud over here. That's, that's my thought cloud. I like thought clouds. All right. It equals the same thing, 856 over 3. A fraction is a division. It's the same thing. All right. So either way that you see these things written, whether you see it with a, uh -oh, I'm sorry, with a division sign here or as a fraction, it's the same thing. That means the same thing. All right. So. They both mean divide, all right? They both mean divide. So now, let's look through and see what we have here. So I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to put under my house something. The thing in the numerator, the thing that comes first, 856 is under my house, and 3 is out front, okay? Now, I know under my house is not proper mathematical terminology, but if I say under the house, you know what I mean. All right. So now let's talk about what exactly we do when we long divide. Some of you already have it worked out. I know the answer. I know, but I want you to know why you do every step you do. Okay. So here we're going to take this. And the very first thing we do, all right, the very first thing that we do is we look at the first thing out here. With numbers, there's only one number. Even if there was a two-digit number like 13, we would still take the entire number 13. With polynomials, it'll be a little different. We'll look at the first term. All right, but it's going to be the same idea there. So we're going to look at the first thing out front and the first thing here in this case is a placeholder. See, these are hundreds, tens, and ones, right? So with polynomials, it'll be terms. With numbers, it's placeholders. There's uh, hundreds, tens, ones, that kind of thing. So we say to ourselves, hey, self, what do I multiply by three to get eight? And even though three doesn't multiply evenly into eight, we say hey, two, right? Because two times eight, I mean, sorry, two times three is what? It's six. And that goes in my hundreds column because I have two of those. So then I take the number that I just wrote down and I do what? I take this number and some of y'all are screaming, write a six down. Why do you write a six down? Because you take the two and you multiply it by the three and you write it right here. That's why. You got to know why you do it. Okay. So there's six does go there. But why? Because I took the two times the three and wrote down a six. All right. And then what do I do? And this is where I'm going to get you. Okay, because all of you are yelling at the computer right now going, you subtract. No, you change the sign. You change the sign, which, by the way, that's what a minus means. We were taught since we were growing up, right? That's one of the big 
things that we did in math, I think uh, we, math teachers, including myself, uh, we teach you from an early age that a plus sign means add and a minus sign means subtract. No, a plus sign means don't change the signs and combine like terms. A minus sign means change all the signs after the minus and combine like terms. That's what it means. All right? So here we're going to change the signs. I'm going to change the 6 from positive to negative. And that's where your, your total subtract because there's a minus sign. And that's what we're going to do, but we're changing the sign. And that's going to be important when we go on to polynomials because we're going to be subtracting a string of terms, which means we're distributing a negative, which means we're changing all the signs. I just told you a minus means change all the signs and combine like terms. Okay? So here, 8 minus 6 is now 2. And what do I do now? I'm, I'm done with the first iteration. Now I bring down this 5, right? I bring down the next placeholder. In polynomials, it'll be bring down the next term, okay? So once I do this, now I reiterate the process. That just means do the same exact process again. So this time, I'm looking again at the first thing out front, which is a 3, and this time I'm looking at this number here, 25, okay? So how many times will 3 go into 25? Well, 8, right? And why do I put 8? Because then I go back and multiply 8 times 3, and I get what? 24, and I write that here, 24. And then, after I, after I, every time after I multiply, I multiply everything I just wrote down. The two's already there. Don't, do, don't use it again. Times everything right here. And I write that here. Okay? So, 8 times 3 is 24. And then I need to change the sign. Okay? Change the sign. Minus. So, then 25 minus 24 is what? It's one. That's right, one. And then guess what? I've just finished my process a second time. I need to do my process a third time now. I'm going to bring down my what? I wrote too big, I think. Six. So I have 16. Then I start the process all over again. I say, how many times will three go into 16? That's right, five times. So I'm going to put a five. And notice I'm lining things up. Two was in my hundreds. Eight was in my tens. Five was in my ones. I'm going to do the same thing with polynomials where I line up the terms. With, whole, with numbers, with whole numbers, I'm lining, or numbers, it doesn't have to be whole numbers. I guess you could even do decimals, okay? But as dividing these out, then I'm lining up my hundreds, tens, ones. I line up my terms in Long division of polynomials. So here, I, then I go back and I say 5 times 3 and write it down right here. What is 5 times 3? 15. And then I come down here and say, okay, what do I do now? I change my sign again. Minus here. And so 16 minus 15 is 1. And that 1 represents my what? Remainder. That's my remainder. So how do I write the answer here? Okay. So I know a lot of y'all are going, oh, it's 285 R1. Look, y'all, I am the biggest Star Wars fan this side of the far side of the galaxy, okay? This side of Tatooine or Jakku or you name it, okay? Marokia. 285, it is not R1. When you divide by 3, that's different than dividing by 10. That's different than dividing by x plus 2. So a remainder of 1 means something different on each one of those. So just to tell me the remainder is 1 is not enough information. So we're not. I love R2-D2. He's my favorite character of all time in Star Wars. But we're not doing R1 here. We're going to have 285 and one third and technically we add it but that's what it is 285 and one third so when you have a mixed number you add it okay you add it and i'm only telling you that because when we get to long division we will add or subtract our remainders depending on what it is because it is possible to get a negative remainder in division of polynomials here 285 and one third is our final answer that's what this equals and it's the same thing as 285 plus one third okay think about the think about the mixed number one and a half if you think about one and a half think about one and a half dollars is that one plus one half dollars one minus one half dollars one times one half dollars or one divided by one half dollars well one and a half dollars is a dollar fifty right and one plus fifty cents one dollar is a dollar fifty right so it means to add when you have a mixed number like that, okay? So I just wanted to emphasize that point. So I'm going to turn the page, and I'm going to work one that is not a number here. It's going to be a polynomial, okay? Uh, in fact, it's going to be a two polynomials, one divided by another one. 
and I'm going to use the same color scheme. I'm going to put my stuff under my house in red and, you know, do the blue and the brown and that kind of stuff. Okay. So let's use the same color scheme, do the same thing, change the signs, multiply, look at the first thing, all this other stuff. Okay. Line things up. So everything's going to be the same here. I could have written this x squared plus 7x plus 12 in parentheses divided by x plus 4 in parentheses. If I don't do that, remember order of operations would just divide the 12 by the x. That's why I have to put it in parentheses. But those two things say the same thing. So if I wanted to kind of mimic what I did before, here's my little thought cloud saying, oh, that's the same thing. So it doesn't matter if you know, your teacher or your book that you use may put it this way or they may write it this way. Either way is fine. They both mean the same thing. You are dividing either way. So then the thing that goes under my house is the x squared one, okay? And then out here is x plus 4. And then how do I do long division? I look at the first thing here and the first thing here. x and x squared. <clears throat> what do I multiply by x to get x squared? Well, I multiply by x, right? And, and the, way, the way I think about that in my mind is I say, hey, I do x squared over x, right? I do this thing over this thing. And that tells me what to do here. And that simp this simplifies to just good old x here. All right? So then that's x. And then what do I do after I write that down? I multiply by everything here. Okay? I'm going to leave those lines there even though they're not part of the problem because I'm distributing that x times both those things. So x times x is x squared and x times 4 is plus 4x. And some of you go, why didn't you write the x here? Because I'm keeping all my x's lined up here. Okay? So that's why I write my x there. I'm keeping it all lined up. And also, if I do this, when I get over here to this spot right here that's at the end, I know I'm done. Hmm, that's nice. All right? So then x times x is x squared, x plus 4 is plus 4x. And then... See, y'all are all saying subtract, but you got to change the signs. So I'm changing my signs. Subtracting means to do this right here. Put a minus sign and change all the signs after it when the parentheses is there, right? So I'm going to change the signs. This x squared is positive, so it becomes negative, and this plus becomes a minus, okay? This should always, always, always happen. If that doesn't cancel out, and it cancels because it goes to zero, if that doesn't cancel, you made a boo-boo. Put a band-aid on it and start over again, Okay? Because it has to cancel. The first column always must cancel in long division of polynomials or you must made a mistake, start over. Okay? So then I say, okay, I have a positive 7x and a minus 4x now. Okay? So that's going to be what? A positive 3x. And then one final thing before I start my iteration again, I bring down the next term plus 12. Instead of bringing down the tens or the ones like I did in long division of whole numbers uh, or numbers, I, I say, okay, let me bring down the next term. So plus 12 was my next term. And it's important. You don't say, well, it's understood positive 12. No. Once you have something written down, you have to write a plus sign after it to separate that term. Remember, pluses and minuses separate terms. So here, then I start this process over again. I look at x and 3x. What do I multiply by x to get 3x? Again, I can think about it as 3x over x. Well, that becomes 3, right? So, but I can also, in my mind, hopefully see, I need to multiply this by 3 to get 3x. So then put a 3 here, and what kind of 3? It's positive, and again, you already had a term here, so you got to put a sign here, plus or minus, okay? So 3, so plus 3. 3, and then I do the same thing. I take this 3 times both these things over here, okay? So what is 3 times x? That's 3x. And then what is 3 times 4? That's 12. What kind of 12? Positive. All right. What do I do? Don't forget, i got to change my signs. So that's mi minus or negative, and this becomes negative. That cancels. And guess what? Plus 12 and minus 12 also cancels, and that goes to 0 for my what? My remainder. If I don't have a remainder, what do I write? Nothing. Zero means nothing. Don't write anything. Don't write, don't write anything. So my answer here is just simply what? X plus 3. Now tell me this. You, I mean, just forget about polynomials for a minute. What is the opposite of division? That's right, multiplication. Multiplication and division are kind of opposite, just like add, subtract, or opposites of each other. So what you can do is you can take your answer here, you can multiply it by what's in the denominator here, and it's going to give you this. 
if there's no remainder. If there's a remainder, you do that FOIL or that multiplication. It could be bigger than FOIL, by the way. You do that multiplication first, and then you add or subtract your remainder last. And after you multiply that and then add or subtract your remainder, that should give you what's in the numerator there. All right? So you can check this if you want to by multiplying. All right, so let's keep looking at these long division problems here. <clears throat> so here, what goes under my house is going to be the y squared part, right? Minus 2y minus 48, and then out front is y minus 8. So this one has some negative signs already in it, but that's okay. So I'm going to say, okay, look, I look at what first? I say, what do I multiply by y to get y squared? Okay, so I have two y's and I have one, right? I need, I'm sorry, I need two and I have one. So I have to get how many? I need one more. So I'm going to put that in line with my y's here. So then y times y and then y times negative 8. It's going to be y squared minus 8y when I distribute, okay? Then what do I do? I have to come back and change my sign. Got to come back and change my sign. So if I change, or signs, I should say. Make this a negative and make that a positive, and then that cancels. If that doesn't cancel, I messed up, right? That first column's got to cancel. So then that gives me what? That gives me negative 2x and plus 8x is, that's a, I'm sorry, not x, but y. A 6y, and then I, to finish this iteration out, I bring down my minus 48, and now I'm ready to do the process again. All right? So when I get ready to do the process again, I say, what do I multiply by y to get 6y? Well, 6. What kind of 6? Positive. The other thing is, if you write a y right here, you can't write 6y right there. That won't work. You can never have two things in a row. And remember, I'm lining up all my like terms. So then if, I go, if I'm going above negative 48, it's got to be something without a y. If I write it over here, it's got to be a y squared. I'm lining up all of my variables, Okay. So, in my powers and those kinds of things, my terms. So, here, 6 times y is 6y, all right? Wait, sorry. I left this circle here. 6 times y is 6y, and then 6 times negative 8 is negative 48, and then I do what? Change my signs again. So minus and plus. Every single time after you multiply, you must change your signs. So then this 6y minus 6y canceled. Remember that first column must cancel every single step, every time through, every iteration. Must cancel. And then negative 48 plus 48, well, again, that cancels, and my remainder is what? Zero. Very good. So my answer here is just y plus 6. So then y, y plus 6 is my answer here. Okay, again, you can take that and multiply it by this, and it's going to give you that numerator there. All right, it's going to give you that numerator there. <clears throat> so let's continue to look at these long division ones, okay? So, and I give you several here. We're going to have some more with remainders of zero, but I have some with remainders. Don't you worry, uh, coming. All right, so we're going to sit here. We're going to have our little house here, and then underneath there goes the 3x squared one. And then x plus 5 is out front. And then I say, okay, what do I do? I look at x and 3x squared. What do I need to multiply by x to get 3x squared? Well, I need a 3 and I need one more x, right? I have two x's, and I, or I need two x's. I have one, so I need one more. And I have a 3 out front that I need. So 3x, and then I take that 3x times both these things, right? So 3x times x is what? 3x squared, it better be. Look, when you write it down, you know if it's going to cancel. It's got to be identical right there, and that is. And then 3x times plus 5 is what? Plus 15x. And then, don't forget, what do I do every time after I multiply? That's right, change my signs. Minus here, that changes to minus. That cancels, it's got to. Every time, that first term's got to cancel. And then I do what? I say, okay, I have... Positive 13x minus 15x. Well, they're different signs, so I subtract, I get 2x, and then it's negative because 15 is bigger than 13, right? When I talk about the bigger number there, I disregard the sign. 
because obviously negative 15 is not as big as positive 13, but 15 is bigger than 13. So that's what I'm talking about when I say get, get the larger sign. Then I bring down my minus 10 or my negative 10 or my subtract 10. It's all the same. And I'm finally done with the first iteration. Now I have to do the iteration again. And I look again at this x, but this time I look at this minus 2x. What do I multiply by x to get minus 2x? A minus 2 or negative 2 or subtract 2. That negative is important there. Won't be right without it. So then I take this negative 2 times x and get what? Negative 2x. And then I also take negative 2 times positive 5 and get what? Negative 10. And then what do I do? Change my sign. It's going to be a plus here and a plus here, and that cancels. And guess what? This also cancels, right? And my remainder is zero, all right? And I don't want you to get comfortable thinking that all of them are remainder zeros, but I told you I got some coming that aren't. So this is going to be 3x minus 2. But right now, I just want you to get comfortable with the iterations and the steps we're going through and that kind of thing, okay? So let's look at some more. Let's keep on looking at these. Oh, here we go. X cubed. This is a little bit bigger. X to the third. X cubed plus 3X squared plus 5X plus 3 over X plus 1. So let's check it out. Let's see what goes under my house this time. And what that power does, by the way, that just adds another iteration to my process. So I won't be done after two iterations on this one. I'll have to do a third one. Okay? If the thing in the denominator stays with a positive x, or x to the first, and it did. So here, I'm going to look at this, and I'll say, okay, what do I do? What do I multiply by x to get x to the third? Well, I have, I need three x's, and I have one of them, so I need two more, right? So x squared, and then I take that times both these. So what is x squared times x? That's x to the third. What is x squared times one? That's plus x squared. And then what do I do? That's right, change my signs. Change my signs. Minus, and then minus here. That cancels. That cancels. And I'm left with a positive 3x squared and then a negative x squared. So that's going to be 3 minus 1 is what? 2, uh oh, got a straight mark there. 2x squared. And then I bring down my next term, which is plus 5x. There's no need to bring down that plus 3 right now. You can if you want to. But there's no need to because I'm not going to use it. The, I just need as many terms here as I have here. And this is basic. We're not going to need anything extra at this point. All right? In the advanced video, you may have some other uh, things there that, that happen. So here, we're going to then look again at this x out here. But this time, 2x squared. So I need the 2 and I need an x. So a 2 and an x. And this is positive and this is pot, so I need a positive there, okay? I need a plus right here. So then I take that 2x times x, and I get 2x squared. And then I take 2x times 1 and get plus 2x. And then what do I do? I change my signs. Always change my signs after I multiply. This is minus, and this is minus. That cancels, and I'm left with a positive 5x and then minus 2x. And that's going to give me a positive 3x. And then I bring down my what? Plus 3. And then I start my process over another time, right? Because I haven't finished out here. It tells me I'm not done. So then I look at x into 3x. What do I multiply by x to get 3x? 3. What kind of 3? Plus. So then 3 times x is 3x. And then I also take my 3 times my 1 and I get what? Plus 3. And then guess what I do? Change them signs, right? Minus and minus, and that cancels. Plus 3 minus 3 cancels and goes to 0. My remainder is 0 again, so my answer is just all of this this time. All right, so it's going to be x squared plus 2x plus 3. So again, let's keep looking at these. x squared minus 7x minus 7 divided by x plus 3. So what's going to be under my house this time? The x squared one, right? And then minus 7x minus 7. And out front is the x plus 3. And so here, what do I multiply by? 
What do I multiply by x to get x squared? Again, x. So I'm going to put that in my x column. Then I'm going to multiply by both these things. x times x is what? x squared. And then x times plus 3 is plus 3x. Remember, i got to do this one to get this one. And then here times here to get this one. Okay? Got to multiply by both of them. And then I'm going to change my signs. Minus here and make this a minus. That cancels. And that leaves me with what? Negative 7x and negative 3x. Two negatives, you add them together to get 10x, and you keep it what? Negative, and then you bring down your negative 7. Bring down your negative 7. And now I'm ready to do my process over again, and this time I look at x and negative 10x. What do I multiply by x to get negative 10x? That's right, negative 10. So then I take negative 10 times x, and I get what? Negative 10x, and then I take negative 10 times 3 and get what? Negative 30. And then I have to do what again? Change my signs. Y'all are getting good at this, right? Plus, make this a plus. That cancels. And then I have a negative 7 and a positive 30. So I subtract. 30 minus 7 is 23. And that remainder is positive because 30 is bigger than 7 and it's positive. So how do I write this answer? This answer is going to be a little different, right? But it's going to be x minus 10 still. Still, still what I have up here, all right? Still what I have up there, x minus 10. And then plus, because my remainder is positive, 23 over what I divided by. Right? So it's 23. That goes here. And then what I divided by stays in the denominator. It was in the bottom up here. It's in the bottom here. Bottom fancy word for a denominator, right? So x minus 10 and then plus 23 over x plus 3. Again, let me say this. I don't know if I said this on this video or not, but if you use slanted fractions, don't. Because if, because if you write this... You really just wrote this, and that's not right. So we don't, unless you put parentheses around that, it's incorrect, all right? So do not write slanted fractions. I would prefer you not. Just, I mean, look, again, you're in class, probably. That's why you're watching the video. Probably not for fun. So do those things to get things right. Make a horizontal fraction line. It's less confusing. Hopefully it'll help you in the long run not to get too confused about things. So uh, definitely, definitely, definitely do that. All right, so let's look at another one here. 6x squared minus 5x minus 27 over 2x minus 5. All right, so under my house goes the 6x squared one, right? Minus 5x minus 27 and out front, 2x minus 5. And this one, the added level of difficulty here is you have this 2x out front here that, you know, makes it a little more challenging, but it's not something we can't overcome, right? So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna beat this. So here we look at 2x into 6x squared. What do I multiply by? Remember I told you to think about it this way. Well, 6 over 2 is 3, and then this gives you x, okay? Or I just think about it this way. I say, what do I need to multiply by 2 to get 6? 3. And then I have... 1x, and I need 2, so I need one more. So I need a 3 and an x, and I put that in my x column here. Then I take the 3x times 2x, and I get what? 6x squared. I take the 3x times the negative 5, and I get minus 15x. And then I change my signs. Minus here, plus here, that cancels. And I am left with... Negative 5 and plus 15 is plus 10, so 10x, and then bring down my minus 27. And then I look at this, I say, what do I multiply by 2x to get 10x? Well, 2 times 5 is 10, and then x is already there, don't need it, so then it's plus 5. 5 times 2x is what? 10x, that's why I did it. And then 5 times negative 5 is negative 25, and then I come back and do what? Change my signs. Minus here, plus here, that cancels. What is negative 27 plus 25? Right? It's got a plus sign, but that doesn't mean we add. We combine like terms. Right? In a negative and a positive, we subtract. 27 minus 25 is 2. And then 27 is bigger, so it's negative 2. My negative is kind of long there. And so that is my remainder. So how do I write that answer? So I still have my 3x plus 5. 
And then I told you it was added to it, right? And then we're going to put negative 2 over 2x minus 5. That's one of the ways that I will accept this on here, especially early on when I'm introducing these. What I want you to understand, if you have a one-term remainder and it's negative, you can just replace that plus out front with that negative, okay? So then or the other way that I want you to eventually write this one. Now, if your remainder has more than one term, you can't necessarily do this, but here you can. So then minus... 2 over 2x minus 5, all right? So either one of those answers, those are the two most common answers. There's actually one more that I'm not going to put up here that, that can happen here, but uh, that's definitely more of, of an advanced topic there. So, however, if you were in my class, I would give you credit for any version of the correct answer as long as it was simplified, all right? And I, I sort of, some people say this isn't simplified, but because of how other remainders work, I allow that because you can't always take a negative to sit in here and bring it out. It's only when it's a single term up here, okay? That's the only time that you can bring that negative out. All right, so 4m squared minus 8m minus 5 over 2m plus 1. So let's take this. It's going to be 4m squared minus 8m minus 5, and it's going to be 2m plus 1. So I look at 2m into 4m squared. What do I multiply by 2m to get 4m squared? I need a 2 and an m, right? So 2m times 2m is, the whole reason I did it was to get 4m squared. And then 2m times plus 1 is plus 2m. And then, and then what do I do? And then I change those signs, right? Minus here, make this a minus, and that cancels. Right, 4m squared minus 4m squared cancels. Negative 8m and negative 2m. If they're both negative, I see negative signs, but I add the same signs, right? I add and keep it negative. So that's negative 10m. All right, negative 10m. I got off my color scheme, sorry. And then bring down your negative 5. And then I start the, proce or start the process over again. I say 2m and negative 10m. Well, that's going to be negative 5. And so then you take negative 5 times 2m and you get negative 10m. And then you take negative 5 times positive 1 and you get negative 5. And then, and then you change your signs. Change those signs. Plus, plus. That cancels. That actually cancels. And we're back to getting a zero remainder. It doesn't have to be that way. But on this one, it turns out to be a zero remainder again. All right? So that's your final answer. 2m minus 5. Two 2m minus 5. All right? So let's look at another one. In fact, this will be our last one. 4x to the third minus 23x squared plus 17x minus 9 divided by x minus 5. Ooh, y'all are like, I'm glad it's the last one. All right, so again, it's x to the third, so it's going to have one extra iteration on it, one extra time through all the, the steps. 4x to the third minus 23x squared plus 17x minus 9, and then x minus 5. And so I look at x into 4x to the third. What do you multiply by x to get 4x to the third? Well, I need a 4 and I need x squared because I have 1x and I need two more to get x to the third. Then I take this and multiply times x is going to be 4x to the third. Again, every time I say this, that's why I did it, right? I did it so that when I change my signs, that first column will cancel. And then 4x, times, uh, 4x squared times negative 5 is minus 20x squared. And now I am ready to what? Change those signs, right? Minus here, plus here, that cancels. And I am left with negative 23 plus 20 is negative 3x squared, right? When you combine like terms, you get a like term. And, it's, and it, it helps us to remember it because everything in this column is x squared, right? Everything is an x squared. Then we bring down what? Plus 17x, all right? And then I look at this and go, okay, x into negative 3x squared is what? Negative 3x, right? I need a negative 3, and then I need one more x to get x squared. Then I take negative 3x times x, and that gives me negative 3x squared. Then negative 3x times negative 5 is plus 15x. 
And then what do I do? Change my signs. Plus here, make this a minus. That cancels, it's got to. And then positive 17 minus 15 is 2x and bring down my minus 9. And then I look at x and 2x. And I say, okay, what do I multiply by x to get 2x? A positive 2. 2 times x is what? 2x. And then what is 2 times negative 5? It's negative 10. And then change my signs. Minus here, plus here, that cancels. But this doesn't cancel. Negative 9 plus 10 is a 1, and that is my remainder. Right, so how do I write this answer? I write this answer by saying all of this and then my remainder over what I divided by. Or, or this right here, those are the same thing, right? So this is going to be 4x to the second minus 3x plus 2. And then plus, my, my remainder is positive here. So I'm going to talk about minus plus 1 over x minus 5. Oops. And there is the final one. The thing I was talking about with the powers, notice we have x to the third, then we have x to the squared, then we have x, and then we have no variable at all. That's what I mean by when I say all the x is accounted for. If I started with x to the fifth, I'd have to have x to the fourth, x to the third, x squared, x, and a number. Okay? So this is the basic video. I did not do anything out of order, meaning not out of descending order here, and I didn't leave any x's out. So if you want to see that, then you would need to go to the advanced video uh, to watch and see those things.